Okay, so um, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to another group meeting for the MIT Spark Lab. It's great to see you here. Um, so today's presentation is from uh, Jin Ran Shi. Um, he's, uh, he's a master's student in the lab and he's going to tell us about our work on uh, Teaser++, which is a fast and certifiable point cloud registration algorithm. I think the plan is to have a quick overview over slides and a quick demo with the real-time execution of Teaser++ afterwards. And uh, thanks for giving this presentation, Jingnan. Great, uh, thanks, Luca. Uh, so this will be mainly a presentation focused on first uh, what Teaser++ is capable of doing, and as well as giving you guys a very quick demo of some of the functionalities of Teaser++, as well as showing um, the basic usage of Teaser++ both in uh, C++ as well as in Python. Uh, so during the presentation, feel free to unmute yourself and then ask any questions if you want. Uh, I'll try to answer them. And then uh, if, and I think um, Hank will also be able to join uh, if uh, you, you have some more specific questions. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, so first thing first, what exactly is point card registration? So uh, essentially point card registration is uh, a kind of problem that focuses on aligning multiple point clouds together. There are a lot of applications for this, uh, specifically in autonomous driving, for example. Uh, there are cases where you need to stitch LiDAR scans together uh, very quickly to figure out the surroundings of the vehicles. In situations where robotic manipulation is needed, uh, point car registration is also necessary for the robots to determine, say, the locations of the objects on the assembly lines, or in this case, the locations of the plates uh, in a kitchen environment. And to be more broadly uh, speaking, point car registration can be used to solve uh, localization problems and uh, of course, slam problems. So to be more precise, uh, the problem of point cloud registration can be um, divided into uh, basically a few parts. So the first thing we need to do is uh, match features in the point clouds we have. So let's say we're trying to align the left uh, rabbit with the, uh, the right rabbit. So first of all, we need to use features to match points on the left rabbit, which we call the model, uh, with the f corresponding feature points on the left uh, red rabbit, which is uh, what we call the scene. So after we have uh, the corresponding feature points, we then solve uh, optimi an optimization problem that basically give us uh, this, the rotation, so in this case, the rotation in SO3, uh, the translation in uh, normal Euclidean space, as well as a scale. Uh, so if you look at the objective functions here, we're just trying to minimize uh, the total error of the estimated uh, rotation, translation, and scale applied to the model, which is uh, denoted by the variable A here, with respect to the scene, which is denoted by variable B. Now the one over beta square here is just to uh, normalize the, uh, the arrow on each point. However, uh, one challenge faced by practitioners in this field is that a lot of times uh, the first step, namely the feature matching step, generates a lot of incorrect correspondences uh, for you know, a uh, feature detector such as FPFH, uh, in practice, over 95% of the generated correspondence can be incorrect. And by incorrect, I mean they basically correspond to a point that is very, very far off from the actual point it should correspond to, which will generate in outlier correspondences that will detract the entire, uh, or shall we say, in the normal registration pipeline if the pipeline is not designed to withhold such outliers. Uh, so to put things into more of a, a holistic perspective, um, 
here we have uh, a, a plot showing the challenges uh, of 3D point cloud registration in two scales. So first of all, on the y-axis, we have efficiency, which basically means how fast we can run the algorithm to generate a result. On the x-axis, we have what we call the certifiable robustness, which is basically um, how robust the algorithm can in terms of uh, giving us the correct result as well as telling us whether the result is correct when we have the uh, correct result, uh, when we have a result. Uh, so you probably know RANSEC. Again, RANSEC, it is pretty fast uh, given that you only need to select a few points um, to, for each iteration. However, it is not necessarily the most robust algorithm out there uh, if you can only uh, run a few iterations. And then on the uh, most, I guess the bottom right corner, we have uh, the branch and bound methods. So the branch and bound methods um, can give us, again, global, global, globally optimal solution, uh, but it is not necessarily fast because, uh, again, it's just search over a very, very large space uh, to figure out uh, the best solution. So uh, what we are presenting in this presentation here is what we call the teaser method, which is uh, can achieve both efficiency uh, as well as uh, certifiable robustness. So it is in the top right corner. So, sorry. So what is teaser? Uh, teaser basically stands for uh, truncated least square estimation and semi-definite relaxation. So the main gist of it is uh, we first decouple uh, the entire estimation problem uh, into three steps, estimate scale, estimate rotation, and estimate translation. And we use truncated least square to solve each of the subproblems. Um, by truncated least square, we basically uh, mean something shown on the left here. Uh, so in this case, we have uh, basically a normal least square within the, uh, the bound. And then if we have a residual that is bigger than the bound, uh, we basically give a fixed value. So the benefits of having a truncated least square um, cost function is that for outliers correspondences in our case, uh, they won't generate very, very large costs uh, to, so that the, the generated estimation results won't be scaled by the uh, outliers we have in the data. Yeah, again, this is just a, a, a very cool animation showing the decouple three problems I mentioned before. Uh, does anyone have any questions at this point? Great. Uh, so I'll just be keeping going. So uh, the insights and the intuition behind how we decouple the problems is um, in Euclidean space, uh, there are environment measurements, uh, which basically consists of uh, values uh, that are invariant under uh, different transformations. So first of all, the relative distances uh, between each pair of points are invariant to translation and rotation. So if you have a fixed lens uh, line segment, even after you translate it and rotate it, it's not going to change its length. Then the second insight is, um, the relative positions between points are invariant to translation. So let's say if you have a vector from uh, point A to, to uh, from one point to another point, after translation, the vector is not going to change. Uh, so uh, again, this is a very, very summarized uh, pipeline showing the teaser uh, algorithm. So basically we first estimate the scale using adaptive loading and then we estimate the rotation using some adaptive relaxation. And finally, we use uh, that voting again to estimate the translation. So unfortunately, uh, the, the middle step basically using some adaptive relaxation to solve, uh, to solve for ro rotation is pretty slow in practice. So uh, we propose to change um, the middle step estimating rotation with another method called the GNCTRS method which is basically um, an iterative method that uses the truncated least square cost function 
to, uh, to achieve a pretty robust estimation of the rotation. Um, so, um, you probably remember that I mentioned about certifiable robustness uh, when I was talking about the performance of different resolution algorithms. Now, by certifiable, uh, I basically mean there's a way for us to tell whether the obtained solution is close enough to the optimal solution. So, with the GNC TLS method, um, after we use this method, a, a pretty fast method to solve for the rotation, we can then uh, leverage our knowledge of the uh, the uh, S to B problem to to give basically gives a certificate certificate on how good or how close uh, the solution is to the optimal solution, the global optimal solution, and basically give us a suboptimality gap uh, on say the closeness of the solution. So uh, to further illustrate the performance of teaser. Um, with different data set. Um, here we have a plot showing basically uh, running basically a bunch of different algorithms on similar data sets. And uh, we have here the rotation arrow on the y axis and the outlier rate uh, on the x axis. So as you can tell here, we have 95% you know, and 99% of outlier, which is pretty, pretty significant. Um, and so if we look at the, uh, the plots here, we have uh, RANSAC uh, 10K, which means around RANSAC to a maximum of 10K iterations, as well as RANSAC one minute, which is around RANSAC until it terminates after one minute. So you can see the RANSAC methods fail uh, pretty miserably uh, at even 95% error. And for the uh, RANSAC one minute, it starts to fail at 99% error. And however, for teaser and teaser plus plus, which is the version of teaser that uses GNC TLS method, uh, it stays pretty much uh, correct uh, from 95% outlier rate to 99% outlier rate. Uh, so in summary, uh, teaser and teaser plus plus are robust against 99% outlier rates and return the most accurate solutions. And to further illustrate how efficient our algorithm is, uh, here is a plot showing the basically the running speed of TSA uh, comparing to different uh, to to other different algorithms. So uh, again, we basically have um, RANSAC running faster and faster with uh, you know higher outlier rates and. Uh, for all the outlier rates, TZ plus plus run consistently below uh, 20 milliseconds. Uh, this is because um, we designed the algorithm so that it can use extensive parallelization to achieve significant performance gain um, over you know different data sets. Uh, the original teaser, since it uses the uh, semi-dynamic relaxation, it is. Uh, it is very slow. But the main takeaway from this slide is uh, teaser plus plus can achieve similar performance uh, comparing to teaser and it is much, much faster and it potentially can be used for real time applications. So speaking of applications, uh, here showing uh, one application which is object post estimation uh, of teaser. So essentially we have here uh, first step, we match features um, from a model, uh, which I believe is a, is a serial box uh, with the different feature points on the 3D scan of the table. And then we um, basically have the inliers that, uh, picked by the teaser showing green here. And then we have the registered results from teaser uh, show red here. So it basically again, have a very accurate registration result uh, with very low rotation errors and translation errors. Uh, another application um, of teaser is to basically uh, match 3D scans. So uh, here we have two uh, RGBD scans uh, generated by, uh, I believe, uh, you know, some RGBD cameras of indoor scene with the table and chairs. 
and then the lines here uh, correspond to the correspondences generated by 3D SmoothNet, um, a very recent uh, uh, algorithm that basically use learned feature descriptors to match features. So the green lines here correspond to the uh, the after inlier correspondences, and then the red lines here correspond to the outlier correspondences. Uh, as you can see, there are like a lot of red lines and very few uh, green lines. Uh, so here we are showing the uh, TSA++ plus plus alignment uh, and as well as the ground truth alignment. So, um, you know, you can see they basically, uh, the teaser results is basically uh, very, very similar to the ground truth alignment. And you can't really tell if there's any arrow off our uh, results. Uh, the green dots in the, in the video correspond to the inliers uh, selected by a uh, teaser. Um, one interest, interesting observation we had on the teaser results um, is shown here. So on the plot on the left, uh, we have, first of all, on the y-axis, we have the rotation arrow. On the uh, x-axis, we have the, uh, basically the different scenes we tested uh, for the data set. And then the blue dots here uh, represent the solution that is uh, certifiably correct uh, using our certification algorithm. So you can see where well, it makes sense for us to have a very, very large cluster around the, uh, you know, the zero degree rotation arrow. Uh, however, uh, we also have some points scattered around, around 180 degrees as well as 90 degrees. So this actually, we believe, uh, correspond to the symmetry inherent in the scene. Uh, because uh, we are only using uh, 3D geometry, data to align the scene, there are certain situations where you can't actually uh, differentiate between uh, multiple possible solutions. So on the right, we, sh we are showing a very uh, classical example. So we have a very large flat plane in both of the 3D scans we're trying to match. Um, so the figure A here showing the ground truth correspondences. So you can see it's matching you know, a flat plane on a flat plane. Uh, on the uh, figure C, we're actually showing TZ++ estimate. So, you know, TZ++ is actually still uh, matching the flat plane with the flat plane, but it is actually matching in a way that is 180 degrees um, off. So, you know, uh, from the point of TZ++, it is, you know, as good solution as the original ground truth, but because we don't have other information differentiated, it picks uh, this one instead of the one that is actually correct based on ground truth. Uh, so this shows that it might, you know, in certain situations, more information might be necessary um, for the algorithm to pick out which one is the, uh, the ground truth or the, the ground truth solution. <laughs> Uh, so let's talk about the implementation details of TZ++. So TZ++ is implemented with both uh, robustness in terms of you know, the algorith algorithmic robustness as well as robustness in terms of code quality and uh, ease to use. So TZ++ itself is implemented using uh, C++ and OpenMP, which is a very popular and industry standard um, framework for shared memory parallelization. Um, so with the uh, C++ core implemented, uh, we extended our support uh, to both Python and MATLAB. So we provide bindings for both Python 3 and Python 2, as well as MATLAB. Uh, so you know, the, the, uh, the bindings we offer allow users to easily visualize um, data using Python and MATLAB. Uh, as well as in uh, as well as uh, incorporate uh, the TSA++ pipeline into other libraries uh, for uh, easy prototyping and research. Um, so here we have perhaps a more detailed pipeline of the uh, TSA++ algorithm. So first we have inputs are basically correspondences and noise bounds of uh, the point clouds, uh, and then we first estimate the scale. So if uh, we already know scale beforehand, which is the case for a lot of applications. We basically use a known scale to prune outliers. 
and then we uh, generate the inline graph. Uh, if you're interested in more details, you can uh, look at our paper. And then with the inline graph, we uh, find the maximum click to select uh, the largest set of inliers. And then we pass it to GNCTLS for rotation estimation, and as well as using uh, the adapt adaptive voting for uh, translation estimation. And then finally, we have the outputs, which are scale, rotation, and translation. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, let's look at some of the code examples uh, of using T++ uh, in different languages. Uh, so first we have the um, C++ usage. Um, so essentially to use T++, we just need to first have um, a parameter struct ready. So uh, there are you know, a multiple um, things you can set here, but a lot of them are actually, um, you don't need to change for most of the cases and we provide defaults for all of the options here. Um, so C bar two, uh, you usually want to keep it to one. Um, it is basically the, uh, yeah, you, you should refer to paper for more details, but basically C bar two times uh, noise bound squared is uh, the uh, the maximum allowed um, noise uh, squared allowed uh, you want to use in your estimation problem. So for the params dot noise bound, you want to change it to um, uh, your expected maximum noise bound a bound on the noise of each of the points in your point clouds. And then uh, the params dot estimate scaling is pretty straightforward. It's basically, whether you want to estimate scale or not. So you want to set it to true if you want to have a scale in your output, and then you set it to false if you don't want to have a scale. So uh, the, the next three parameters, the rotation GNC factor, the rotation max iteration, and the rotation cost threshold, um, you don't necessarily need to change it. These are just um, parameters for the GNC TRS method, and uh, the defaults work really well in uh, almost all the cases we've encountered. And um, the last option is basically allows you to select the uh, rotation estimation algorithm you want to use. So for most of the cases, you want to use the GNC TLS method, but we also provide um, FGR if you want to use it. Uh, and then solving it with TZ++ is also very easy. You just create a solver um, with the parameter struct as an input argument, and you solve it. You know, with solve the solve, SRC and DST are basically uh, two eigenmatrices containing the correspondences, and you can get a solution uh, using the solve dot get solution. So, so uh, Jim, just a quick question, just to make sure uh, we are all on the same page. So here, the bar C and the noise bound, what really matters is the product you said. In this case, the product is 0 0.05, which uh, means that the maximum error that you want after you align the point is five centimeter. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, this is C++, and I'm going to show you guys also the Python usage of Teaser. Um, another, so, another question. Uh, yeah. So this, this noise bound, uh, is this squared or? Not squared. It so be. this is not squared. Noise bound is not squared. It's just the two norm of the Euclidean distance. Yeah. Okay, great. Uh, so using uh, T plus plus in Python is uh, also pretty straightforward. It is basically the same kind of uh, usage you, you saw in C++. Um, you, it has the same name, parameter names, and you set it the same way. So uh, it should be pretty straightforward. And solving it with this piece of plus plus is also pretty simple. Again, it is the same kind of stuff where you uh, construct a solver with a parameter and then you call solve uh, with uh, SRC, which is the non-p matrix uh, correspond to the, uh, the input correspondences and DST, which is also a non-p matrix correspond to the, um, the, uh, the same correspondences. <laughs> And uh, the other the other point I would like to add is uh, you know in the in the source and destination uh, the points have to be arranged in the order of the correspondence right yeah yeah so basically the first for example the first column of the source 
should be should correspond to the first column of the destination point. So those are the the, the, the correspondences you get out of the feature matching. Yes, yes. So yeah, so I think a better way to understand it is source and destination are correspondences instead of point cloud. Uh, and then in MATLAB, uh, uh, because of well, um, the way MATLAB binding works, as uh, it is slightly different comparing to uh, the C++ method. So, but the parameter is the same. So you set it, uh, you know, with the same parameter, and then if you want to solve it, you just pass all the values to a teaser solve MATLAB function uh, with basically a, a bunch of different named uh, variable inputs. So again, it's the same name. It should be pretty uh, self-explanatory. Uh, any questions regarding uh, teaser plus at this point? I, I do have a couple of things that, uh, that I want to cover. So. Um, the first one is about the experiments. Like, you know, you were talking about 20 milliseconds uh, timing for the execution of teaser plus plus. Um, I just wanted to put that into context in terms of how many correspondences. So 20 milliseconds for how many correspondences. And a related question is how many correspondences are you using? How many points are you using for the scan matching data set? Yeah, so uh, let me just go back uh, to the uh, timing diagram. So. Uh, in this diagram, um, I think we are using a thousand points at first, and then with um, ninety-nine percent say outlier rate, that means we have you know ninety-nine percent of the thousand points are outliers, and then only one percent of the thousand points are inliers. Uh, so, and then in the case of the three D match data set, or oh, so. Uh, First, we start from 5,000 feature points uh, in both uh, the source as well as the destination scans. So we have 5,000 points. We calculate the uh, 3D smoothness feature vectors for each of the 5,000 points. And then we use nearest neighbor matching to, uh, to match points uh, in the two sets, uh, two, uh, in the 5,000 points. Mm -hmm. So with the nearest neighbor matching, we do it bidirectional. So uh, it needs to be both the closest from source to destination as well as the destination uh, from destination to source. So that will reduce the number of correspondences fed to teasers. So usually, uh, based on my observation, uh, starting from thousand points, uh, the number of correspondences fed to teaser is usually around 600-ish to 1,000-ish, depending on the quality of the feature vector. Um, Okay. So I think, yeah, in this particular scan, I believe the uh, the total correspondences are around 580 correspondences. Uh, yeah. So, so essentially, we're, we should be able to run in 20 milliseconds or so also on these data. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Okay. Uh, the other clarification was a little bit about the technique itself and to the architecture of the, of the, of teaser. So if you go to slide 16, um, Slide 16 should be the one showing the overall architecture. If you can comment on the difference. So you, you mentioned graduated and non-convexity, this GNC stuff, which is also something that is, has been used in uh, fast global registration. Can you comment on what's different here? Um, so the reason why we want to use uh, GNC TLS is uh, it uses the same form or cost function that we use in other parts of the pipeline, so we use it the same truncated least square cost function, and then it gives us a nice way to say use, you know, the certifiable uh, framework we we talked about at the beginning. So it can give us a nice certificate on the quality of the solution uh, because we're using the GNC TRS method. But I guess also the the um, decoupling and the maximum click probably sounding very different from. Uh, yeah. From registration as well. Yeah, so yeah, sorry. The fast global registration, um, they don't have the decoupling. So uh, they solve everything together um, with, uh, you know, the, what, what they didn't call it GNC, or graduate non actually, but this is a similar way to, um, to solve for everything, but it, they didn't solve it in a decoupled way. So basically, I think in the original implementation of the FGR, 
uh, they used, uh, I believe, the just the Jacobian method to solve for both rotation and translation at the same time. So, so let me treat one one more. Yeah. Why uh, why is this more robust than FGR then? Um, okay, because at the beginning, uh, during the scale estimation phase, uh, we already filtered out a large number of outliers, uh, and then because we can filter out a large number of outliers. Uh, when we reach the rotation estimation step, we essentially have a cleaner uh, set of data we can play with, so it can give us uh, a better um, a better solution at the end. Agreed. Yeah, and skill, the skill filtering, but also the maximum click is uh, is getting rid of most of the of the outliers. Yes. Okay. Thanks. I guess it was a a, a comment more than a question, but uh, yeah. all right. Uh, okay, great. Uh, any more questions? Yeah, I have a question about the resolution of the point clouds between the input and the thing that you're matching on. Yeah. And it seems like you don't need exact point clouds to be able to match uh, based on your real world data. Do you still need them to have roughly the same density of points per volume? Um, so I believe you are talking about uh, something similar to this. Sure. Yeah. So let's say in, in this case, right? So uh, they don't necessarily need to be of the same volume, but um, it needs to be in a form where whatever feature extraction algorithm you run on them can give you reliable uh, feature correspondences. Okay. Uh, yeah. So the input point clouds. Um, Unless you you know directly run T Z plus plus on uh, the all the correspondences possible um, with the input point clouds, uh, the density and you know volume or whatever of the input point clouds don't matter for T Z plus plus if you have a feature extraction algorithm to extract corresponding points. Nice. And what is the feature extraction algorithm you are using here? Yeah. So. Uh, you know, using a uh, 3D SmoothNet, uh, which is a, a new paper came out in uh, 2019, I believe. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. No problem. And I think it, it's worth just uh, stressing that uh, teaser, yeah, teaser is a completely a feature-based uh, point cloud registration method, meaning that, uh, you know, you know, how do you go from a raw point cloud to feature points is completely up to you, you know, up to, up to your choice. You can use handcrafted features, you can use deep learning, but what, what eventually matters is the two matrices you, 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 uh, you, you, you feed into the teaser algorithm. Right? It's just the source and destination, which is just two matrices with n rows where each row is the 3D point coordinate. So, in, so that being said, you know, it doesn't depend on uh, you know, the resolution of your point cloud or how you represent even, you know, your 3D data. You can use voxels, you can use whatever, uh, you can use mesh, whatever things you want, but eventually just give me a few points that you think are interesting and important and they are matched. So in that, and then teaser will figure out the, uh, re the, the, the polls for you. Great. Thanks for the clarification. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I believe that should be all the questions. Uh, so now it's time for uh, to uh, to get a little uh, hands-on experience with using Giza Plus Plus for registration and Open 3D for visualization of the results in Python. Um, I'm just gonna put the QR code here. <laughs> 